Hey, how's it going, guys? I happened to get a box in the mail last week, and I've been looking for an excuse to unbox this, and I just, for whatever reason, haven't. So uh, we're going to be looking at some turtle figures today. I got some new pickups I feel like talking about, and I figured why else, why not? I'll show you what I've sorted out so far to take the C2E2. It's not much so far, but I've gone through like one shelf in that closet, so figured why not go ahead and just show what I got so far, and maybe you guys can give me your feedback if some of this stuff's worth taking or not. So I guess without further ado, we'll, we'll welcome our one person in here. How you doing, Chris? <laughs> nice to see you in the chat. I just randomly decided to like, ah, screw it, I'll go live and see what happens. So thanks for hopping in. Appreciate it. So <laughs> don't get too much traction here on this channel, but I like to at least come in here and say what's up. And then we got, looks like Comicore Chad coming in here in a second. There it is. I got I got both chats open, so one definitely loads a lot faster than the other. He goes, hey, yo, he just didn't put the what's pop, and I guess he didn't feel like putting that part. So there you go. What's up, Chad? But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll get into a couple of comic book reviews for today. Uh, I'll start with this one because it was on top. Not necessarily my favorite book of the day, but not too bad. It's uh, TMNT Jenica number one. I guess there's going to be more of these. Like, I thought this was just a one shot, but it definitely had it to be continued. So it kind of kills me when they come out with a book like this and they'll put like part one of five or one of 12 or what have you. They just kind of like, here you go. It's going to be thrown in your pull list and you'll be paying $4.99. Come on. Ugh. $4.99 for this. But nonetheless, uh, not a bad read. Uh, you actually get to see the world of TMNT now, now that they're like the mutagen bombs gone off in New York. It's kind of nice them just sitting back and telling a tale uh, that's happening like in the mutant world or like the little mutant city within New York City. Uh, so Jenica basically uh, fighting crime on the street. She's basically just like a mask vigilante at this point. And um, she runs into like an ex-lover who has been turned into like this like Billy Goat Rat thing. So there's that, <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much all there is to this book. Just a nice, simple story. But like I said, unfortunately, uh, there's going to be another part. Actually, the next issue's cover looks a lot cooler, in my opinion. It's just like half human Jenica, half turtle Jenica with a shattered mirror. So hopefully that's the cover next month or whatever they're going to do with this. Like I said, didn't know they were doing anything past the one shot. I just, they threw it my pull list, so I bought it. And apparently there's going to be another one next month. So cool. All right, looks like Pages Villain Plastics joined us. What's going on, man? Nice to see you in the chat tonight. Next up, we got Shazam, number 11. I actually, like, I was talking to Chad earlier on the phone uh, about uh, Curse of the White Knight, and I, I completely forgot there was an issue. I forgot even to read, and then I, I was going to, like, read it, but I'm like, ah, screw it, I want to go live because i got to get these turtle figures out of this box over here. And then as I was unbagging that, there was Shazam 10. So I actually read this and Batman today without reading the previous issues. So shame on me, I guess. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Shazam 11, uh, really cool. I think, you know, they're going for, you know, that big climax in issue 12. Uh, basically, uh, Shazam has to fight the wizard in this one, who's been kind of, you know, taking control of somehow. Like I said, I need to read issue 10. <laughs> Uh, but the reveal toward the end of this is pretty awesome, uh, where Mr. Mind basically gets, well, spoilers. I'll, I'll hold up the book for spoilers, I guess. If you guys don't want the spoiler, I'll take it down when I'm done talking. Spoilers, because I know it's New Comic Wednesday still, but spoilers. Uh, Mr. Mind uh, gets control of CC, which is Billy Batson's father, and uh, he basically just, un like everyone on this cover, the whole Monster Society, uh, that's who's going to be after him in issue 12, so... You, you kind of see in this issue how the entire monster society gets unleashed against the Shazam family or the Shazamily. Make of that what you will. That's what they call it in here, the Shazamily. I didn't make that up. That was Jeff Johns. But anyway, uh, solid issue. I'm definitely, I can't wait for issue 12. Uh, I think that's going to be a real special issue. So spoilers over. Oh, welcome into the chat. My friend Joker68 just got off the phone with him not too long ago as well. Uh, definitely uh, looking forward to a package from him tomorrow. I'm going to try to get some stuff signed for my friend Joker at C2E2. 
so once again, how you doing, Joker? Nice to see you up and about in the chat tonight. Uh, next up, we got Ice Cream Man. This book <laughs> continues to be absolutely nuts, as you can tell by the cover. So in this one, uh, basically, it's just... Like, there's an old man, uh, he's just kind of in a bed. I don't know what disease he has. It's basically like some sort of dementia where he's he's losing his memories and that stuff. But actually, I can't show that on screen. <laughs> basically, there's this little naked goblin uh, that's take. he's in his memories. And you can see the goblin, like, go, like, take out, like, his first kiss, uh, his kids being born and that stuff. And eventually, like, the, the end of this issue... I guess once again, spoilers, but every one of these ice cream man's ends and you know, with actually I don't think the ice cream man's in this one, unless he's the goblin. But anyway, like every one of these ends is bad for the main character, basically. It's your anthology horror style, but nonetheless, it ends with like the, the little gremlin there, he's just like pointing at you, and then it just turns white. So yeah, pretty fun, but not not as good as some of the previous issues. They were hitting a lot of these out of the park recently. I would say you get a base hit on this one for the baseball terms. So not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, maybe my pick of the week, uh, Batman Curse of the White Knight Book 7, which I, I guess I could say that's thing is I still need to go back and read issue 6. Um, but I'll be talking spoilers while I'm holding the book up, if that makes sense. Uh, put it down. No more spoilers. But anyway, spoilers. Um, Chad, I know if you're watching, you haven't read it yet, just put me on mute or stop watching, what have you. But... Uh, spoilers for White Knight. Um, Batman ends up revealing his identity um, to stop these like corrupt Gothamites. So like the upper one percent of Gotham, they basically have uh, seized control and they've used Wayne Incorporated to do that. Basically, so he's revealed himself to be Batman and is using his name to spread out the assets of Wayne Incorporated back to Gotham where it belongs. So there's a really cool moment toward the end of this. Uh, where you get to see, like, Batman's like, I'm going to tell you who I am, but I need you guys to do me one favor. Clear the streets because it's going to be a war zone. So uh, everyone in the book's like, they're not going to clear streets for you. They hate you, Batman. It's the curse of the White Knight universe. They're not big fans of Batman, that universe, after the first White Knight where, you know, Joker or Jack Napier basically tried to villainize Batman. Some people still aren't happy about Batman. Um, but nonetheless, in this, you get to see, it's almost like a shot of, you know, Times Square, except Gotham's version of Times Square is just empty, except it's it almost looks blood red, and it's just a maskless Batman standing in the middle of it calling out Azrael. It's a really cool shot. It's my pick of the week. You know, Sean Murphy continues to do some awesome work. I hope they eventually reward him by putting him maybe on one of their actual Batman titles and giving reinvigorating that a little bit. Not that the current writers are ever that bad. They're working on that same project now, obviously. But I think Sean Murphy would be a good shot in the arm for any title they could put him on. And then the last thing, uh, my normal pickup for the week uh, for Wednesday, Christ on Infinite Earth, giant size number two. I don't know why we need an issue two of this, but I liked. I just liked the first one just because it, it was like a book I read as a kid. You had Marv Wolfman writing the thing. Um, you had Tom Grummet doing the Lex Luthor backups, which I thought was awesome. I, you guys know me. I love me some Tom Grummet. And just the fact that I can still buy some of his art that looks like he did it in the 90s is pretty awesome. So if you got, at the very least, if you guys are Tom Grummet fans, at least go ahead and pick these up. They're a lot of fun. And then uh, Tom Derenick uh, does the pencils in the first part. And I actually feel pretty happy with the art in the first half of it. Uh, and then the last half of the giant size, you actually get, I think, Crises, Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, issues 8 and 9. So you get the Flash Death and then the Fallout from the Flash Death pretty much. And then uh, I don't even remember what the very last story is from, but it actually has some George Perez art. It's like DC Legacies issue 6, I think it said. So didn't know that existed, thought it was cool. Uh, but overall, the story was mundane. Uh, it seems like, you know, they're trying to give you like a supplement story where they shoehorn Felicity Smoke, the Ray the Green Lantern Corps, uh, the Guardian Ganthet into the CW verse crisis, which some of it's just too unbelievable. Like they've even, in the last one, they even killed off CW Wally West for no reason whatsoever and no one cared. So yeah, uh, crisis, they need an issue too for that. But like I said, the, the Council of Luthers and then now the Council of Superman backups, I thought were a lot of fun. So $5 for all this. Definitely worth it if you guys like the giant size stuff that they've been putting out in Walmarts and such. 
All right, let's see who else we got in here as well. Uh, we have Scott Evans. How you doing, Scott? Nice to see you in the chat. And then we got Prowler67. Long, long time no see, man. I like seeing Prowler in the chats. Oh, and then I did pick this up. This is kind of going to go with the uh, the C2E2 pile, but I found a blank for cover price of three bucks at my shop for Young Avengers. That's the uh, Karen Gill and Jimmy McKelvey run. I thought if nothing else, maybe I'll get like a Kate Bishop or something, but I kind of realized I used most of my backup blanks at Baltimore because I have like a whole stack I still need to hang on my walls and stuff. But uh, I figured like, oh, cool. I'll at least get a Young Avengers one. I, I love this book. I have it hardcover. So I figured why not get a blank one and maybe get, I said, Kate Bishop or Loki on it would be a lot of fun. So at least I have one back up there. And of course, you guys know this thing is coming with me to C2E. So like I said, hug your sketchbooks. Just not too hard. Don't break them. But sketchbooks. Gotta love them. All right. So, you know what? We're just gonna move on to the turtles. You guys came to see the turtles. The only reason I'm doing this video, besides to say hi to all you guys, I need to get these turtles out of this cardboard box. So, oh, luckily there's like no wrapping. So all that's in there, the, the bubble wrap stuff, and then the turtles. So let's take a look and see what we got. So I bought, I pre-ordered the four pack of uh, the movie Turtles because I think I got the first one. So if you guys don't know the reference on the first ones, uh, this is the Michelangelo from the 1999 movie line. So I got all four of those turtles. I just happened to walk into a GameStop and they had them on sale. So I, I consider myself really lucky to get these because I didn't even know they were happening. I think Comic Core Chad mentioned them on the off chance one night. And I'm like, yeah, I might swing by GameStop to see if they have like Michelangelo and they actually ended up having all four. So the detail NECA puts in their action figures. I don't do a lot of action figures, but this movie is like one of my top five all-time favorite movies. So I got to have the, and you guys know how much I love turtles. So I had to have these turtles. So then they, what do they do? They put out four more action figures. So, and it looks like at least I was concerned about these boxes because I did buy, <laughs> full disclosure, I guess. I did buy one of my buddies who I'm staying with at C2E2, the Shredder and the Splinter. Uh, and those boxes are kind of messed up. Um, so I'm a little concerned what these are going to look like, but we're off to a great start with uh, the Foot Soldier with melee weapons. So there is the Foot Soldier there. Um, I guess that's the one that was just like, your mouth, Miss O'Neill, shut it. So there's that. And then let me see if I can find the other foot soldier here because we'll, we'll lead up to the other big two. Um, here's the other foot soldier. The box looks really good on that. At least I like put the actual like hooks on them this time. The other one just had like, as you can see on Mikey back here. So I'm trying not to drop these boxes. They just kind of put like this cheap, like generic hanging gimmick on there so they can hang them up at the stores and they look like they break off super easy. At least on these, like if you wanted to display them in your home or whatever, they're actually part of the box now. They got like a nice piece of cardboard there. But this, it says it's the foot soldier with bladed weapons. So I guess there are a minor difference between the two foot soldiers there and just their weaponry and that stuff. And I don't know. Other than that, the sculpts look pretty much identical to me. Even their little fist gauntlets and stuff are pretty much the same. So the only difference I can tell is just their weapons that they come with. So... There's those, and then oh, here, here, here's the icing on the cake right here. So we'll we'll start with Master Splinter to start off. Look at the detail in Splinter there. Oh my God, that is absolutely amazing. I'm so happy this box isn't messed up. <laughs> That's because the Splinter I bought my buddy. It looked like someone may have dropped that one, but I think he'll still be happy. He usually lets lets the figures breathe, if you will. But sometimes I'll, I'll let mine suffocate. I guess I like the display. I, I just like these boxes. I like seeing the the original, uh, you know, imagery from the movie on them, along with the, the stuff from, you know, the the pictures of the action figure. I think the boxes are really cool. So if I keep them in the boxes, I'll keep the boxes like I want to. So definitely really awesome detail on that splinter. It looks like a full cloth little uh, tunic there. He comes with the nunchucks, which I think some people are like, why nunchucks? Like, well, that's what he ended up throwing uh, Shredder into the... Uh, the compactor with or the you know the trash truck so definitely oh that's so cool uh, i'm so happy that these finally arrived and then the last one master shredder so oh man 
I had to have this one. And he's got like that really cool like silver cloth cape he had in the original movie back there and everything. I mean, and he's got the one claw on this hand here. Oh, that is that's phenomenal. I think these are the best NECA figures I've seen between these two. I know I like me the the Michelangelo up there and the rest of the turtles, but man, I think they outdid themselves with these two. I, I definitely am going to display these somehow. But yeah, th those are those are amazing. So good work, NECA, to say the least. So yeah, these are all uh, GameStop exclusives. If you guys wanted to try to hunt them out in the wild, uh, when I went and got my set for my buddy, I actually just walked into the GameStop. They didn't even have them out for sale. I. I I don't know. I don't work for that GameStop. I don't know what they were thinking. They, they weren't pre-ordered. They just had them in the back. So if you go to GameStop and want them, they're going to bother you anyway. Just go and ask. They'll probably be able to find them in the back for some reason. <laughs> like I don't know why they wouldn't be out on the, sh the show floor with everything else. I know my GameStop around here, they just merged with the ThinkGeek Corporation. So basically now it's like almost all action figures – and all the video games have been pushed into the corners of the store. Uh, Joker, I ordered them off GameStop's website. They may still be available there. I'm not sure. I know when they did the other line, they were only available in stores after the initial pre-order. So you guys could still try GameStop.com and see if they're available there. Uh, but if not, yeah, they definitely should be in GameStop stores now. So I would be blowing up your GameStop stores if you're at all interested in these figures, especially like, the Splinter and the Shredder. If nothing else, I would just at least go after the Splinter and the Shredder because uh, these things, I mean, the quality in these is excellent. And <laughs> You can probably at least find the foot soldiers. I have a feeling uh, you're going to be able to find a lot of foot soldiers out there, especially since there's like two different types of them with melee weapons and bladed weapons, but they're the same action figure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would, I would at least try to get Shredder and then Splinter if you want to get two of them. I'll probably set you back about $25 a figure, but uh, well worth it, in my opinion, for Shredder and Splinter. But I wanted to make sure I got them, so I just pre-ordered them like in October uh, when I found out about the pre-order opportunity. So, yeah, really cool. All right, let's see who else joins here. Oh, we had Genome Presents. How you doing, Genome? You've been killing on his channel lately, so definitely check out Genome. He has content almost every other day now. So, cheers, Genome. Let's see what else we got in the chat. I'll work my way up, then back down. Chris Bear says, ooh, the sketchbook. Yeah, we'll see what I get this weekend. If I'm show, I'll probably have at least one something to show off, I hope. Uh, he also says, I like the new GC Giant Size books because they're sturdy enough to be treated like an actual book. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely true. I feel like the, the DC Giant Size is actually a little bit better put together than, say, Curse of the White Knight. Actually, I think it's either issue five or six. I had the 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 center fold just fell out of my issue five. And I'm just like, what paying $5 for this book. And they can't even keep the middle page stapled in. So not thrilled about that, but whatever. Uh, we got, oh, YouTube is 90. Drink it in, man. What's going on, Chad? Actually, I'm glad you joined. I'm going to uh, AEW this, I think it's Saturdays or pay-per-view up in Chicago kind of the correspond with C2E2. So we'll get to see Chris Jericho defend his AEW championship against uh, Mox. So I'm looking forward to that. We love some Chris Jericho between us. Uh, let's see. Actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, I got a bunch of uh, half-price book stuff to show up. You guys know, if I go live, I'm showing off half-price books finds. Uh, you know that at this point. So picked up a lot of stuff for somebody else. I haven't sent his AOK -OK yet, but it's coming. Uh, but I know he's probably looking for most of these books. So that's why I picked them up for a buck a piece. Got a uh, X-Men number one. Come on. You can never have enough copies of X-Men number one. Got the uh, beast and storm cover there with poor Gene and uh, Charles pushed way to the back. X-Men number three. Actually, I think this is, I needed an X-Men number three. I think for whatever reason, I don't think I had an X-Men number three in the collection. I'm not sure why. It just has always eluded me, so luckily I finally found it for a buck. Oh, yes, we got Bear Island Comics in the chat. How you doing, Bear? He says, so psyched for C2E2. I know, I'm like, I for whatever reason, I maybe it's just because, like, I'm, I was conned out last year, and i just been working a lot, but I was just like, I wasn't feeling C2E2 this year. And then my vacation started yesterday, and I'm like, 
I'm ready to go to Chicago. I'm ready to meet some creators, get some books signed, hang out with some friends. I am finally ready for C2E2. So I'm glad to see you, Bear. Hopefully I'll be seeing you this weekend. Uh, a lot of community members are going to that as well. So hopefully I'll get to see some people there. Uh, new X-Men, number 120. This may be the uh, – the no actually, I think it's the one or either before or after. There's enough set issue where there's just no dialogue at all in the book. It may be the one after this. But I love the Grant Morrison run, so I went ahead and picked it up just in case somebody needs it. Another X-Men number one because, like I said, why not? And look at this cast of characters. You got Colossus. I know Katrin figures she loves her some Colossus. Uh, you got Rogue, Gambit, and then Psylocke. Good old Psylocke. And then uh, another copy of X-Men number. I keep finding these. I think it's like, what, first Belladonna or something like that. So I always pick it up for a buck. Just usually is giveaways and stuff. So put them in that box over there. All right. Then here's another trip to that same half price. So they had like um, my new strategy for half price books is when they have a big sale, like they had their tote sale, which you pay $20 for the tote. And anything you get that fits in that tote is yours, basically. So you might be asking, why don't you just go to the tote bag sale then? It's like, well, I don't really want to rub shoulder to shoulder trying to buy things I can get for 20 cents and a dollar. I mean, I think I getting loading up with everything with dollar books, I think I can get 135 books in there, which I think I divided up to like 15 cents. But a lot of times I'd wait for the sale and then anything I actually wanted would be gone in like two minutes. And if I work that day, there's no chance I'm getting the books I want. So I've started to go before and after the sale. So I can, they're going to load up before the sale and I can start to take advantage. Like I got all those X-Men books and then I'll go after the sale when they have to restock their shelves. So I just like, you know, when, when everything I'm buying is like 20 cents to a dollar, I don't really need to get it on sale. <laughs> so I just said, screw it. I'll go in the in-betweens. And go from there. So got some cool books. Nothing too crazy. Um, I got a Darkness issue 11. I mean, Michael Turner cover. I think they had like every variant cover of this. I just went and stuck with the Turner because, I mean, you guys know me. My, my favorite era of comics is probably the middle 2000s. And Michael Turner uh, was the best artist in the mid 2000s for sure. So I had to get that cover. Absolutely phenomenal. I got another XO Man of War. Uh, zero from the fresh chromium mines of the 90s. I love it. I, I can't get enough of the 90s and chromium. I got it. If I see it for 20 cents, I'm just going to pick it up at this point because why not? Well, this we got the art chemist in the chat. This guy knows some art, but check out this guy's channel. If you guys want to see some good quality art, definitely check out Arsenio the art chemist. He's got some great stuff going on on his channel as well. Got the max number two. Oh, let me, let me, let me get the gimmick up here. New stand. So <laughs> I haven't set it for a while. So there you go. New stand. There, I'll give somebody epilepsy, I guess. But nonetheless, max number two new stand. Can't pass up those early image new stands for 20 cents. Another XO Manowar. So I'm slowly filling up like all of the uh, XO Manowar stuff. So I got issue 14. Actually, I do need to read this because this is on our uh, this hit our modern men randomizer this week, uh, and that's Oblivion Song. So we're going to be reading Oblivion Song one through six, I'm guessing, whatever the first volume covers or first trade. Um, so I ended up finding like a whole stack of these, so I don't even need to like get anything. <laughs> Chris Barrett says you said new stand recently, but not with enthusiasm. Sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute, am I going back? Oh, I did. I, I didn't realize I had two copies of this. So not only did I get, like I said, I can't resist a good Chromium comic. So not only did I get one copy, I found the second copy of XO Man of War Zero because why not? Cool Joe Casada art. Maybe I'll Paul Miotti sign one of these this weekend. That'll be fun. So XO Man of War. Guess if you're going to C2E2 and need a copy, which you probably don't, let me know. So there you go. <laughs> Continuing, XO Man of War number five. Like I said, I, I'm kind of challenging myself to get like the first ten of a run of the Valiant books for twenty cents or less. So, so far I think I've got uh, almost all the XOs. I've got a lot of the. Oh, it's a Bloodshot. I think I've got all ten of them. 
Uh, Annihilation, one of six. So I remember people really going crazy over Annihilation. Uh, so I found it for 20 cents. I just got to figure out a way to get that pesky sticker off of there. So, but other than that, been a book I've been looking for for a minute so I can finally read it. Probably should just read it on Unlimited, but I don't think that far ahead for some reason. But hey, 20 cents, not going to pass that up. Like I said, I went a little crazy on Oblivion Song, and then I got lucky because it hit the randomizer on the Modern Men Monday show. So I got issue eight, issue seven, issue number six, issue number five, four, and then issue number three. And then issue number two, all for 20 cents a piece. So couldn't think of a luckier way. Get those books for 20 cents and then actually have to read them as part of basically a book club. I feel like I either have this, maybe drop the title, or it just came out. But for some reason, they had die number... Really? Okay, there we go. For some reason, they had die number 10 for 20 cents. And I'm like, well, screw it. I may as well just finish out the second trade's worth. So I think I have six through number nine and I just stopped around then and then I didn't get 10. So I think this is actually the B cover for 10 even. So there you go. thought that was really awesome. And then the ones I paid a dollar for, I got this uh, Superman action comic 686 funeral for a friend DCU variant. So I love the DC universe variants. Uh, this is technically a second printing of this book. Uh, but I would I would love to collect the whole series of DC variants for the funeral for a friend line. Um, so I thought that was real, a really cool find for a buck. Uh, here is, I think this is an Ed McGinnis cover. It's the second printing of FF. I see the first printing all the time, but I never see the second printing. But I thought that was a really cool uh, Fantastic Four one swipe. So I figured why not go ahead and get that. So I keep tripping over this thing in the wild for a buck. So I got... Another copy of uh, Batman number one, Tom King, David Finch. Heck, I guess I could put that on my C2E2 pile. They're all going. That'd be cool, right? <laughs> Actually, I may already have them signed. Anyway, I'm, I probably already have a signed copy of that somewhere. Uh, Captain America, 326. Really cool. Mike Zek cover on that one. So these aren't ones that last long. And the dollar bins around here, I know there's pretty much a collector. If anything, uh, before, you know, 1990 comes in, he sees that he's probably going to buy it. So I... Took the opportunity to get that. Uh, got uh, Doom Patrol 34. If this isn't, I think it's close to the first appearance of Flex Mentallo. Can't remember if it's uh, 33, 34, 35. But nonetheless, I, I re I've been reading Doom Patrol in the DC Universe on and off. It's a really cool run. A lot of fun. I think this is the one where they like they basically get all of Paris, France trapped in a painting. So Justice League Europe is first assigned to take care of that and figure out how to get them out and your, your team on that is Animal Man, Booster Gold, and Blue Beetle. They're not going to figure out anything. <laughs> I love that team, but the incompetence runs wild. Once again, for a dollar, I think I have a few copies of this. I might have given most of them away. Got yeah, Amazing Spider-Man number one for Buck. I think this is technically the first appearance of Cindy Moon, maybe. Something like that. I think the money book's for, but hey, still cool to have. People always like getting it, so I figured get it. Hand it to somebody who needs it. And then the last one from that trip, Amazing Spider-Man number nine. I know nothing about this book. I haven't read it. All I know is it's a phenomenal Alex Ross cover. So couldn't pass up the Alex Ross on that one. So like I said, thought that was probably the finest trip of this variety. Take a spot for it. As you can tell, my, my next two days before I go to the con, I'm going to have to get this room straightened up because there's this is... Like, I'm not going to tilt the camera over here, but it, it's bad. There's books everywhere. All right. We'll keep going on the, the finds here. So I actually went yesterday, too, because like I said, why not? I found a Powers number one. I can't remember if this is like the first Powers. Probably not. I feel like they might have did the, the Marvel, whatever that line was called, and then the image. But 20 cents, no sticker on it. Figured why not? Uh, for a buck, I picked this cover up, one I never had in the collection for whatever reason. I always thought it was really cool. Uh, it's the uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, issue 16, Death of the Family. Really awesome, Tyler. I might actually have Kirkman, or Kirkham sign this one at C2E2 as well. So I may have put that on the pile. Can I even show these covers? <laughs> it might be a little bit too risque. 
Uh, but I'll show at least the first couple. We got I've never heard of this book before. And the only reason I picked them up, they're 20 cents. And they're by the creative team of the Ice Cream Man. So it's the Electric Sublime. Like I said, I've never heard of this book, but I definitely recognize the artist on the cover once I turned it up in the bin. So I got the first three issues. So there's issue one. Uh, there's this really cool, never, I've never seen this cover before. It's a Stephanie Hans cover on issue two. I'm not sure if that's like an incentive cover or B cover or something. And then I can't even pronounce that artist's name, but there you go. Issue number three has a cool cover as well. So I'll definitely be reading those and seeing what in the world this book is. Because like I said, I've, I've never heard of it, but I found the first three issues uh, and I, I know I love me some ice cream, man. So I wanted to check that out. I was hoping they, I don't know if there's three total issues or they keep going past that. Uh, here's a book that just came out. I'll, I Hopefully I have an issue two copy somewhere. If not, I might have to look for one. But I found Something is Killing the Children issue three for 20 cents. So I think now if, the, if they don't know, if it's not DC or Marvel, I think they really just drop their 20 cent bin just to get it out of their store. So I'm pretty sure this came out in December. And it, now it's February. So two months. Instead of paying $3.94, I got for $0.20. Cents, so super random there. Um, Stormwatch 1. Here, let me get the gimmick again. One second. New stand. That's right. New stand Stormwatch number 1. Gotta love it. I, I don't recognize the cover, so I don't know if this is like first run Stormwatch or if they had second run. I can't remember exactly, but it's definitely around uh, early, mid-90s. And I always liked the Stormwatch back then when I got a chance to read it as a kid. I really like this book. I couldn't remember if I think I have the B cover and the C2E2 exclusive cover, but I don't think I have just the old-fashioned A cover for it. So I found Isola number one. It's a pretty solid series if you guys haven't checked it out. It's got some beautiful artwork in it. Um, basically, it's just a lady and her princess tiger trying to survive the wild and get the princess where she needs to go recommend that um got planet x part four or five new x-men i believe if i remember right this may be the so i guess spoilers for you at new x-men fans i think this is the uh, magneto zorn reveal issue if i remember right so once again this is around the point where i uh, actually it's probably the storyline or two storylines before that because i think I can't remember what was called exactly. There was one storyline, and there was Assault on Weapon Plus. I think that's with uh, Phantom X, Logan, and Wolverine. And then Planet X is where Magneto invades New York. So got thrown off there by the Zorn cover, but a phenomenal read. Uh, I, like I said, I can't recommend this run enough. One of my favorite X-Men runs ever. And then my last one on this particular trip, I got this uh, Avengers Arena 14. Like I said, I don't even know the title. I just know it's an excellent swipe cover from Mike Deodato of X-23. When I saw this, I'm like, yep, I'm buying comics today. <laughs> I got to bundle some stuff with this comic to get it. So I thought that was really awesome. So there's that trip. Let's see what else we got. Hey, we got more trips. Here's, I don't know, I think these were from the uh, the Greenwood one I went to. So these were $1.50 and 2 bucks a piece. Found Flashpoint number four for 2 bucks. I think if it's not, it's very close to being the first appearance of the Shazamily now. Shazamily, the Shazam family. <laughs> so cool issue. Not the biggest Flashpoint fan, but I did enjoy the Shazam family in Flashpoint. Uh, here's a third printing of Rage of the Red Lanterns. So I'm trying to get like, I've already got all the John's Green Lantern run from start to finish. Now I'm just kind of trying to get those like, odd covers like your your incentive covers and your multiple printings and i thought this is a really cool shane davis third print so i haven't seen that one before and like i said i've tried to get the oddities here's a second print of green lantern 64 just a black and white version of the a cover for that and here's one i i didn't expect to find this one for a buck 50 i don't know if it even sells for much uh, but I got Red Hood and the Outlaws number one for $1.50. Um, so I think this is one of the slightly more sought after books from the new 52 number ones. It's probably like what at this point, like this Suicide Squad, maybe the Batman, even though that one has dropped substantially since it came out. And even then, I think Suicide Squad's really the only money book remaining. Uh, and then uh, G.I. Joe 137, newsstand. 
I won't I won't give you guys the gimmick this time. It's gotten old already. Uh, but I'm trying to get these later number GI Joes because you just don't see them in the wild at all. Um, so when I saw this one, had to get it for sure. And then one last pick up from them. A lot of sticker books, unfortunately, but sometimes they're pretty cool anyway. You got Justice League 261. Like I said, I need to invest in a hair dryer, I think, to get this crap off of there. There's a sticker on there, but some early Copper Justice Leagues. Don't even remember which number this is because they put the sticker right on the number so they could cover up the price. Uh, 248, Martian Manhunter cover. And then I thought this was just like a cool, I think I think it's got to be a Jay Lee cover on this one. Batman Gotham City, Secret Files and Origins, number one. thought that was just an excellent cover, so why not go and pick it up for a buck? Oh, look at that, another copy of Oblivion Song, number two. 20 cents, what are you going to do? Goes in the box. <laughs> and then uh, Justice League of America, 244. Battle of Steel versus Steel. Got some Mark Bagley art on Just League of America 39. And I think the reason I got that is because they had the connecting cover for 40. Oh, yeah, that's why I got them. They're newsstands. So, yeah, especially like post or in 2010, you didn't see a lot of newsstands. So I had to get those because they were newsstand. I found a Superman comics variant for Firestorm 61. So this is when they're kind of like trying out and teasing, uh, transitioning from DC Comics to just Superman Comics. So on this one, you don't see the DC Comics branding. They just replaced it with Superman Comics. So one of those rare random oddities you see out there. So And it's it's got the new stand barcode on it. That doesn't hurt anything. And then the last pickup uh, is All-Star Batman 13. I believe this is a C cover. I'm not sure who worked on it. That's how it looked cool. Throw it in the stack. Figured, why not? I think I actually passed up on it originally. Then once I had my stack of newsstands, I just went through this end for a buck. I definitely didn't think I'd regret that. All right, let's 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 get back into the chat and see what's going on. Uh, Chris Barrett says, I have a feeling that Electric Sublime isn't a long series. Yeah, it's IDW, so you're probably right. The Electric Sublime's Chad loves those covers. Our chemist says he has the same situation. Books are all over the place. And it looks like he's about to go live soon. So definitely sub him up and check that out. Give you something to do on a comic book Wednesday. The day of all days, if you will. And it looks like Prowler says he's watching from work and getting ready to head home. So be careful, my friend. And Chris Barrett says, Tom King, Batman 24 was the last newsstand book. wonder if those uh, Walmart giant size counts. I don't know. Anyway, we'll uh, conclude the video. I got a little stack of books, and you guys can say, like, why, why would you get that signed? Or why are you taking that to C2E2 or what have you? I said, I, I got to have a place to put these books. There you go, on the ground. I'll, I'll trip over that later. All right. So I haven't sorted much so far. So don't say, like, oh, you need to sort this out to take this guy to do this thing to him. Like, well, that's probably going to be sorted out soon. But I figured, why not, for the sake of just sharing with you guys and having fun, uh, I'll just show you what I'm thinking about taking. So that way, next week, if I do a, a post-C2E2 video, which, hey, I'm doing a post-C2E2 video next week, probably next Tuesday, um, we can see what I did and didn't get signed successfully. So, so far, I sort of like, like I said, the bottom shelf, which is like pretty much X through Z so far. <laughs> so mostly X-Men. Except I even get through the all the X Men because I'm still debating if I'm taking books for Chris Claremont or not. So I think if I take Claremont stuff, do I go big and take giant size X Men number one with me? Is that something I want to haul around in my backpack? Still debating that. You guys can let me know what you think on that. But for now, I just got some new X Men sort of. I just picked some Ginny Frizen covers I like from the run. Like this is the last issue in the run, so she just finally made one with all the characters. Um, and this would be like the comparison to it, issue 10, where it's just Jean. So I think this, like in terms of the solo character covers, I think this last one she did was the best because, hey, Jean Grey, we done love him some Jean. Uh, I'm definitely not going to take all of these but I because I heard one of the guys was charging. But I'm going to end up taking most of my Young Justice uh, because um, – both artists are going. So John Thames will be there. And um, 
Pat Gleason will be there too. God, I couldn't remember his name there for a second. So I'll probably pick like a couple out for Tim's because, like I said, I heard he may start charging. Um, probably would take this one because they both worked on it. If they both worked on it, I'll definitely get double signed. So this one's probably going in the for sure pile. Uh, Gleason, like I said, I don't know if Gleason charges or not anymore. If he doesn't, I'll probably take at least these two uh, as well as four. And then definitely this cover, issue one, well, probably my favorite cover they've done in the run. And then since I had the foil version of it, I figured definitely taking that for sure. I actually unbagged it to get signed. Look at that nice foil shine. But, yeah, this was an exclusive last year at C2E2. I just pulled the trigger and got it because I love me some Young Justice. I love the uh, the contrast and comparison of the colors of the characters on there. But that was really cool. So I'm definitely, like, if I get one book signed out of the Young Justice run, probably be this one and then the second one, probably this one. So let's see what else we got. I may, I was, this was for sure for a second because, uh, you know, Joshua Williamson, he's going, but unfortunately Matina canceled. So this may or may not end up in the pile. So wouldn't mind Williamson's signature on that. Once again, going, I actually just end up sorting out a lot of prison, which for some reason I didn't get anything signed by Jenny prison last year. I think I just, she just didn't make the cut because my bag was so full, but I forgot I, I found this like really cool Angel Illyria cover, which if you guys know, I love me some Buffy and Angel, especially Illyria. That last season of Angel is awesome. So probably one of her finest covers on that run. And then I figured it'd be a good opportunity to get something is killing the children. Number one, double signed by Frizen and James Tynan. Uh, so definitely will be taking this. And then the hard covers. I guess I can get to the black label stuff next. I'm um, definitely taking this um, Joker Harley Criminal Sanity. Kind of one of the situations I really wish the hardcover was out already, but they have freaking like what, eight or nine of these coming out. Um, so definitely going to try to get this triple sign by Cami Garcia, Miko Soyan, and uh, Mike Mayhew. So really like Mayhew's art in this. I think he, he may be charging for signatures from what I've heard, but we'll see. And then uh, got to meet Paul Miotti and Connor again. They were phenomenal in Cincinnati. And this book has been, I know it's we're in February. This may be my favorite individual read of the year so far. Just getting Harley Quinn back to basics with the run that they started. Um, really cool book, in my opinion. So for the hard covers, which, oh, God, it's uh, my back already hurts. <laughs> I don't know how many of these I'm going to take with me at a time. I may just like try to, I may, I don't know if I'm going to take Arrow County or not. That's. The main beast. I just, I guess I haven't really reviewed this one yet. I actually ended up reading all of Harrow County when I was sorting. I was like, oh, I still need to read that. Colin Bunn's going to be there. And I, I feel like I haven't really read a lot of Colin Bunn, but I keep hearing about how great of a writer he is. And he keeps going to all these cons I go to. So I'm like, screw it. I'm going to read Harrow County. And it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, the, the art in the first part of it, it's almost like, you know, a children's storybook. Uh, with the characters, but then like they start using those darker watercolors and dark tones and just these haunting characters really add this like crazy contrast to it. Um, so I thought this book was really cool after I read the whole thing, especially once you get into the other storyline and trade uh, with her twin sister, basically being like the heel evil witch at that point. So really cool read. Uh, another book I've been wanting to get signed for a while. Is, this is the God Country hardcover. This is all there is to it. Got this, I think it was two or three years ago. This was an exclusive release at the Image booth at C2E2. I think that's the last time the Image booth was actually there, come to think of it. And ever since I read this, I'm like, Donnie Cates didn't mess around. He's a great writer. And uh, to, my, to this day, I think this is my favorite Donnie Cates writing. So I'm probably going to take, I know he charges, so I'm probably going to take this one book to get him signed. So definitely taking that. I said I have the Joshua Williamson Flash, which this may be my read for tonight besides the um, this one, the Electric Sublime. So I may read an issue of that, crank out an issue of this. Uh, but, yeah, I definitely want to try to get this read before Friday. So I at least like when I get my book signed, I at least I like to have read them. <laughs> and then uh, Six Gun. So this will probably be like the one I take the reading line and stuff. So once again, Colin Bunn. Figured, why not? It was right next to Harrow County on the shelf. I'm like, I might as well just go ahead and take this one down, too, and get it read. Because I've heard nothing but excellent things about Six Gun. 
And then my last book I'm going to show off tonight, the last one I'm going to take with me, I have to take The House and Powers of X slash 10 hardcover. Coolest hardcover release the last little while. Uh, Hickman has definitely well-crafted his X-Men universe. Um, hopefully I can... I, I, his line wasn't anything last year, but I think it's because he was busy creating this. He didn't really have like a big book out on the shelves at that point last year. I think he just mostly finished up with whatever East of West he's doing. Um, he was definitely finished up with Secret War and Avengers by a couple years. So I think this will reinvigorate his fandom basically. <laughs> so we'll see if I get this on. I really like to. We'll see though. And then I got the, uh, I don't even think I have it here in front of me. I keep losing this hardcover. I think it's downstairs now, but I have the Manhattan Projects hardcover. I found at uh, Half Price Books. So I may, I may throw that one in there as well if I get it completely read. But um, other than that, I know this is an impromptu live stream. Very nice one. Unbox my turtles. Um, so big thanks to everybody for joining me tonight. Uh, <laughs> I apologize for the lack of content on this channel. I definitely invite everyone to follow, you know, the Comic Core. Because that's where I'm probably the most active as a YouTuber now. Uh, definitely check out the Friday show this Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be on because I'll be in Chicago. But I should be back for Modern Men on Monday. And that's at 10 p.m. every Monday, Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be talking Oblivion Song. So definitely uh, click the Comic Core, sub that link up. And, uh, yeah, you can find more of me over there as well as the, all the other uh, comic book members over there, if you will. You got Chad and Catrin Figures, The Great Legends Show. Dang! And then uh, comic book. See, Chad's got Chad's name is on screen. Basically, he's got me calling him comic book Andy now. It's comic man Andy. Thanks, Chad. He gets these names put. He gets the wrong names always put in my head. But comic man Andy. Uh, he's part of the modern man. Of course, Drew Manchu, uh, JB Discovery Bay Comics. Man, we we have a good show on Mondays. A good show on Fridays. But tonight, I think it's the greatest something ever uh, with uh, Whitewell Comics. That guy's awesome. John's Comics Kids. Comics Misexplained, and Bear Island Comics. Those guys are great. And then Tuesday, you get the golden guys. So definitely check out that channel. It's a lot of fun. But until next time, guys, thank you so much. Have a good night.